it really is great to see that open infrastructure really is used by uh, companies like Deutsche Telekom in combination. So it, it isn't enough to just look at cloud in isolation or containers in isolation because the users are combining them together. Another important area of open infrastructure that's still very early uh, in, its, in its evolution is 5G. And one of the reasons this is so interesting is that 5G involves so much more software than the earlier generations, and especially so much more open source software. So up next, we have two speakers. Um, Hasi Bektar is an expert in the evolution of 5G, and Chris Price has been actively transforming the way Ericsson participates in open source projects. Please welcome Chris and Hasib. Hi everyone, I'm extremely excited to be here, not just because it's an OpenStack conference, but because for the first time in conjunction with AT&T, we have brought 5G to OpenStack. Uh, we have created a 5G lounge, we have radios, we have calls, we have everything. Uh, it's a fully functional 5G network, one of very few sites in the US today which is running one, and it's available in the marketplace. What we're gonna do very briefly is geek out a little bit, and we're gonna tell you exactly what that means, and Hasib's going to talk us through the technical side. All right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Ericsson and AT&T have brought some cool things for you. Let me first start by saying that the 5G systems that you will see in the 5G lounge is exactly the same network that's being deployed in AT&T today. Actually, Ericsson and AT&T have launched the same 5G systems in 12 cities last December. The 5G system that we have in the lounge is actually integrated 4G and 5G radios. The 4G supports control plane, such as call setup signaling, and 5G obviously delivers high data user plane. Put it another way, we are letting 5G deliver high bandwidth content and using 4G to control it. We're using 39 gigahertz millimeter wave spectrum and a cool technology called 4 by 100 megahertz carrier aggregation. Make sense? Well, we're basically taking all of the spectrum and aggregating it together to deliver very high bandwidth data, which is in the upwards of one gigabits per second. Ericsson antenna integrated radio, Air 5331, which you will see above your head in the 5G lounge, supports massive MIMO. What it means, it has hundreds of antenna elements inside it. Our baseband 6630 running in the back room can support radio signals from both 4G and 5G technologies. How cool can that be? We actually have two systems here. The first system is N2 and Ericsson, including the core network, all located in this convention center, delivering gigabits of throughput. The second system has Ericsson radios integrated with AT&T's live core network in Dallas, delivering up to 900 megabits per second of throughput to the internet. Well, what that means, we have taken a big fat transport pipe out of this convention center and connected to AT&T's live core network and to the internet. Well, we're not done yet of some cool user equipments. These are uh, Netgear Nighthawk MiFi devices that has Qualcomm's Snapdragon chipset into it. In the Gigabit system, we have connected a test tool to the MiFi UE, to the Netgear UE, so that we can display the throughput. In the second system, the Netgear MiFi device will allow you to connect your mobile phone to our 5G system, powered by Ericsson and AT&T, so that you can experience it yourselves. 
Well, at this time, I'd like to take, and I'd like to thank all of the AT&T, Ericsson, and OpenStack folks who have worked tirelessly to make this 5G launch a reality. So thank you, everybody, for all of your hard work. I know some of you guys are up here till midnight. Thank you again. All right, thanks, Asib. So if that sounds complicated, um, it is because it's pretty complicated. Um, what, I, what I also want to do is I want to thank everyone involved in OpenStack, um, because what you'll find in the lounge is we have, we have one, one antenna which is showing gigabit throughput. That's terminating on an OpenStack hosted MME, HSS, VPG, all the telco words you use. To, everything's running on a little OpenStack data center right on site. So you can actually see gigabit throughput over the wireless running on OpenStack. And that's built on all the work we've done with this community over the last four or five years. Um, and the other one is straight out, to the, straight out to the network. That's running on the Airship project, on OpenStack, on Kubernetes. Uh, we have that running in the, in the AT&T data center. Um, but it's all based on the work we're doing. The reason it's all based on the work we're doing and we're not doing it in-house, ah, it saves money. No, not really. The real reason is soon we're going to have a massive global network which is running gigabit throughput to your handset, to your computer, to whatever, to your car, to trains. And it's all going to be running on a massive distributed data center across the globe in all the operator networks. We're all going to be running OpenStack. We're all going to be running Kubernetes. What this provides is a huge opportunity to the OpenStack community and other communities to be able to access that technology for the first time. 5G is the first time that we get an open infrastructure across our entire mobile network. And that's really exciting for us, and I hope it's really exciting for you. I beg you, go to the lounge, check out, look at the, the radios, they're sitting up high, go check out the Wi-Fi. You can get you know, a couple of hundred megabit throughput on the Wi-Fi if, if you're fast. Um, as soon as everyone else jumps on board, that, that pipeline's gonna get fat. Uh, or less fat, I should say. Yes. Um, but to talk a little more about the 5G, I would like to invite the, um, the VP of the Network Cloud from AT&T, Amy Wheelers. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Amy. Good morning. It's great to be back with you. Um, Chris and Hasib talked about what we have set up in the 5G lounge. I'm going to talk a little bit more about our 5G packet core. In Berlin, we talked about what we were doing um, in our 5G packet core. And if you remember, for those of you who were in Berlin or saw the video, we had Gus sitting in a Faraday cage, and we actually demoed our 5G packet core live. Well, I want to update you on where we've been since then. In December, we launched the first standards-based mobile 5G, and now we're live in parts of 19 cities across the United States. We'll be nationwide in 2020. And this is our 5G Evolve Packet Core that's running on our network cloud, which is deployed and managed by Airship. I know y'all are all familiar with Airship, and I have the great pleasure today to congratulate the Airship community on Airship 1.0, which is enterprise ready and powering 5G today. And that 1.0 release is live now. It provides enterprise grade security, improved resiliency, and expanded documentation along with a lot of other things. We encourage you to get involved in the community and learn more about it this week. There are a lot of talks and things to learn from um, so that you can elevate your infrastructure. You can go to airshipit.org and learn more about it. Um, so let me just ask that we congratulate the team on the 1.0 release. In Berlin, I talked about the 5G revolution and what that would bring. Massive device connectivity, ultra-reliability, ultra-high speeds. Today, we're going to talk about um, the ultra-low latency. And to do that, we're going to have a little fun. Are you all up for some fun? OK. So for our fun with Ericsson, Ericsson has, we've worked with Ericsson to bring a game to the stage. And this game will simulate for you the differences between 5G latency, 4G latency, and 3G latency. And to do that, I'm going to invite up Mark Collier and Sunil Sood. Mark thinks that he can beat me at this game. I don't know if that's true or not yet, but we'll see. 
and Sunil will explain the game and make sure that we don't cheat. Uh, thanks, Amy. So Strike a Light is a competitive two-player game which requires the fast reaction time to win. Okay. To highlight low latency, the two players are going to wear the VR headsets. The camera on the top of the headset is going to feed video to the encoder. And encoder is going to transmit the video packets, the data packets, to the decoder. And decoder is connected to the video of the VR headset. So basically, on the top, of, top half of the screen, you're going to see what Amy and Mark are going to see in their VR headset. And on the lower bottom, what you see is going to be the live video feed. So while Amy and Mark are going to be busy, you know, immersed <laughs> in their video feed, blacked out from the surroundings, and hitting those lit buttons to, to get the points to win, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the latency of the video data packets to give them the experience of 5G, 4G, 3G latency. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can bet it's going to be fun to play. OK. And it's going to be more fun to watch. <laughs> oh, I see. So Amy and Mark, any questions? No, it's no. good. Let's go. All clear. So let's start the game. Mm. All right. All right. Do you promise this is going to be lit? Yeah. Amy, are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Mark, are you ready? Of course. This is crazy. So ready, set, and go. All right. This so is 5G. Really Two to five bananas. millisecond latency. Ah! Here comes 4G, oh. up to 100 millisecond latency. All right, Sunil, I need this that cheat code. <laughs> what, remember, we talked about this. And 3G, up to 250 millisecond latency. Now Give me see. 5G. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is a nightmare. <laughs> that cheat code, Where's remember? My... Oh, my goodness. What happened? Is it over? OK, the game is over. And guess what? Player two is the winner. Oh. And I don't know if that's true. He that's gets crazy. a special prize. Oh, you got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. OK. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't wait to get 5G in real, in real life, because uh, that, that 3G was not cutting it. No, it was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you all could pick up on this, but you know, when the latency went up, I mean, your hands were just all over the place, and it was, it was crazy. You couldn't tell where your hand was. You could see the light, but the hand was not in the same spot. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Um, one of the greatest things about what they've done here is that 5G is really uh, rare right now. And there are very few places on this planet where you can actually experience 5G. And one of them is right here in this Denver Convention Center. I believe they mentioned that earlier. So you can go to the 5G lounge. You can experience it for yourself. You can play this game. And win prizes And yourself. win prizes, <laughs> like this beautiful unicorn. And of course, in addition to checking out the 5G, which again, they actually got permission to use the license spectrum with real live radios. So it's pretty awesome to be able to go see it in the marketplace, check out some prizes. You can also learn more about all this this week with a number of sessions. All right. Thank you very much.